All right, Engine Nerds, in this video, we're going to talk about the blood vessels around the head and the neck. So we're going to go through piece by piece. We're going to start with the arteries, and then we're going to follow up afterwards with the veins. All right, so let's go ahead and get started down here at the bottom. All right, so if you guys look here, we're going to see this uh, nice little vessel here, 179. This guy right here is actually called the left common carotid artery. It actually comes right off the aortic arch. Okay, so it's the second vessel to come off the aortic arch, because you know off the aortic arch, you have what's called the brachiocephalic artery. That one will go into what's called the right subclavian and the right common carotid. The second one is the left common carotid. So this is this guy right here. The left common carotid will move up, up, up superiorly, and then it'll branch into what's called an external and internal carotid artery. Before I show you that, let me angle the skull here a little bit so it can actually be a little easier to see. All right, so if we come up here, you're gonna get to this point here, 71. And it's actually gonna split. The vessel will split into two structures. One is it's gonna be called the external carotid artery, which is 71. In the back here, you can kind of see a tiny little guy here, 72. That's the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery will continue to move upwards through the carotid canal and then the frame and the serum, and it'll go and actually into the brain to supply the circle of Willis. Okay, we'll have another video on the circle of Willis. Okay? Now, the external carotid artery is going to supply a lot of the actual external structures. One of them is it gives off a branch here, 73. 73 is actually called the superior thyroid artery. Okay, so it's gonna give off a superior thyroid artery. Then, if we go up a little bit more, we can see a tiny little vessel right here coming off of the external carotid artery. It's a tiny little one here. And it actually goes underneath a lot of these muscles to supply the tongue via, it's called the lingual artery. Okay, so we have the superior thyroid artery, then the next one is the lingual artery. All right, so if we follow this up more, we're gonna have here again, this is the facial artery. Okay, so it's gonna come up over the mandible, and it's gonna be supplying a lot of the muscles of the face and some of the skin of the face, okay? So this is gonna be the facial artery right there, okay? Then if we come back here and take another little view, okay, we had the external carotid artery in order. We had superior thyroid, we had lingual, we had facial. As we continue upwards, you're gonna give off another one. That's gonna go right here in the back, okay? So you know you have the mandibular condyles. It's gonna go right posterior to this posterior mandibular condyle backwards. This artery right there is called the maxillary artery, okay? So it's called the maxillary artery. And then one more branch is gonna be going back up here. So this is gonna be called the superficial temporal artery. So the superficial temporal artery. So we have maxillary artery, superficial temporal artery, and then one more is it comes from the back. Okay, so again, if you guys see this, another, another branch coming off here. This is another branch of the external carotid artery. It actually comes here, kind of dips underneath the mastoid process here, and comes out the back into the occipital region. Okay, so this is called the occipital artery. Okay, so let's go do a quick recap of them running up through the top all the way through. Okay, so recap. Left common carotid gives off external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. Internal carotid artery goes up and supplies a circle of Willis. That was 72. 71 is the external carotid artery. What was the first branch here? Superior thyroid. The next one was this tiny little guy here that moves underneath a lot of these muscles here, these superhyoid muscles. This is called the lingual artery. Another branch comes up over the mandible, and this is the facial artery. Then, as it proceeds superiorly, it gives off another branch going up right here. You can kind of see it right here in the back part of the mandibular condyle, this posterior mandibular condyle here. This right there is called the maxillary artery. Then as we go up even more superiorly, up into the temporal region, where the uh, temporalis muscle is, you're gonna have the superficial temporal artery. And then if we come backwards, we'll see a tiny little guy coming off here that goes underneath the mastoid process and into the back where the occipital region is, this is the occipital artery. All right, so that covers the branches of the external carotid artery. All right, so this is actually gonna be another view of the facial uh, artery here, another view of the facial artery, but as you continue to go upwards, you'll see what's called uh, another artery kind of coming out from uh, the orbit here. This is actually called the supratrochlear artery. It runs with what's called the supratrochlear nerve, which is a branch off of the trigeminal nerve. But again, this artery here is actually called the supratrochlear artery, okay? just so you don't get it confused with the facial artery. All right, so let's hit one more artery down here in the lower part of the neck before we move up onto the veins. So if you remember, I told you that the aortic arch had three big vessels coming off of it. One was called the brachiocephalic artery. The brachiocephalic artery split into what's called the right subclavian and the right common carotid. The next one was the left common carotid. We already talked about that, all of its branches. The third branch is going to be right here, this tiny little guy here, 83. This is called the left subclavian artery. Okay, so the left subclavian artery will then continue eventually into what's called the axillary artery. Okay, so it'll also have some of its branches though too. Okay, so that's the subclavian artery. All right guys, so I just took the calvaria off, or the skull cap, and what we're gonna see here is we're gonna see a nice little blue dural sinus. Now, dural sinuses 
are basically veins. They're just enclosed within what's called a dural space. And a dural space is basically whenever you have what's called the periosteal layer of the dura mater and the meningeal layer from the dura mater, they break away. Usually they're very, very closely connected. But they break away and in between them they're going to have this dural sinus which basically acts like a vein. This dural sinus right there is actually called the superior sagittal sinus. And it actually runs within a nice little dural septa which we call the falx cerebri which is within the longitudinal fissure. Okay? So again, that's the falx cerebri. It's one of the dural sinuses. It's acting like a vein and it's draining the blood, okay? And it's going to then take it to some other structures, okay? So again, that's the superior sagittal sinus. All right, guys, so now we're gonna take a look at the dural sinuses inside of the skull here, a little bit in the inferior portion. So we saw the superior sagittal sinus on the skull cap. Now we're gonna look here in the inside. If you look here, we're gonna have what's called the occipital sinus, okay? So this one right here is called the occipital sinus. Then we're going to have this nice little big old structure right here called the junction or the confluence of a lot of the sinuses. Okay, so that's the junction or the confluence of the sinuses. And again, this is the occipital. Moving here, this sinus, which is kind of moving from side to side here, a little bit more interiorly, this is called the transverse sinus. Transverse sinus. Then it actually is going to have a little sinus here that's moving on the upper part um, of the petrous component of the temporal bone. So this is called this one up here. Is called the superior petrosal sinus. And then there's one right here, which is on the inferior part of the uh, petrous component of the temporal bone. This is called the inferior petrosal sinus. If you guys remember from the abducens nerve video, it moves with the abducens nerve through the Dorello's canal into the cavernous sinus. So again, this is the inferior petrosal sinus right there. This right here is called the sigmoid sinus. Okay, this is called the sigmoid sinus. Now eventually what happens is, a lot of the blood from these dural sinuses eventually drain into what's called the sigmoid sinus. And the sigmoid sinus empties this blood into what's called the internal jugular vein, which runs through a hole in the skull called the jugular foramen. Okay, so it'll move through a hole in the skull called the jugular foramen. There's the jugular foramen there. It actually moves through that hole. And again, this blood from the sigmoid sinus dumps into the internal jugular vein. The internal jugular vein will move through the jugular foramen, and eventually it'll take the blood downwards where it combines with another vein called the subclavian vein to form what's called the brachiocephalic vein. We'll talk about that. Quick recap, here we go. Occipital sinus, junction or confluence of the sinus, transverse sinus, superior petrosal sinus, inferior petrosal sinus, sigmoid sinus, sigmoid dumps into the internal jugular vein, which goes down through the jugular foramen, combines with the subclavian vein to form what's called the brachiocephalic vein. All right, so let's look at that now in the anterior inferior portion of the neck. All right, so again, to get, look at these actual vessels that I told you, the internal jugular vein, we gotta come down into the anterior inferior neck. So right here, you can't see it, but the internal jugular vein eventually comes down and it runs right here. This is like the hole, the lumen of it, this part right there. So this is the internal jugular vein, but it's on the left side. So this is the left internal jugular the vein. This whole structure over here is the left subclavian vein. Remember what I told you, the left subclavian vein and the left internal jugular vein fuse together or come together, converge together to form this structure here, 99, called the left brachiocephalic vein, okay? Same thing on the other side. Now before we go over there, you can see a tiny little nub here. That little nub is where the external jugular vein dumps its blood into. You, it actually runs across the sternocleidomastoid, so it's a little bit more superficial, which again, you can't see it very well uh, right here. We'll look on the other side so you can see a little better. All right, so taking a look here, you're gonna see a little better. This is actually the external jugular vein. So you see how it's moving across the sternocleidomastoid? I guess this is draining a lot of structures from the external uh, side, right? So from the face, the actual uh, back of the head and stuff like that. So it's draining a lot of those structures. So again, this is the external jugular vein comes downward, like we said, and empties into this structure over here. Okay, so since that's the right external jugular vein, it dumps over here into the right subclavian vein. And again, if you can kind of see right here, you'll see a tiny little tidbit of the right internal jugular vein fusing with the right subclavian vein to form the right brachiocephalic, which eventually merges with the left brachiocephalic to form what's called the superior vena cava, which empties into the right atrium of the heart. All right, so that covers all of that. All right, engineers, so that pretty much covers everything that we were gonna talk about with all the vessels of the head and the neck and even inside of the skull. I hope all of it made sense. I hope you guys really did enjoy it. If you guys did, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. As always, engineers, until next time.